gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. And as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 755, Jesus, Savior, Pilate, Oh, 
And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the Kyrie, found on page 203 in the front of your hymn. <laughs> sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is 1 Kings 19, 9 through 18. <clears throat> at, at Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life 
to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting, <coughs> it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. Quake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus when you arrive. You shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Namsha, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abelmo, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to bow and every mouth, and every mouth that has not kissed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning, if you turn to it please, is Psalm 58. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people, and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very dear to those who hear you, that your glory may dwell in the land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness, faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, the second reading is Romans 10, 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness, righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will ascend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to believe what in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able as we sing the gospel acclamation. Mm -hmm. 
found on page 205. get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while Jesus dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was blowing against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, Peter became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. As the uh, storms made their way through this past week, and, and then I was looking at our hymns and saw the second verse of our opening hymn this morning, I was reminded of a story about a little girl who afraid to go asleep to go to sleep alone on a dark and stormy night cries out for her mother when her mother came into the room she took her daughter in her arms and she gave her a hug kissed her forehead told her that everything was going to be all right and then reminded her that jesus was always with her as the little girl looked up at her mother, she replied, I know that Jesus is always with us, but right now I need a Jesus with skin on. <laughs> <laughs> now, while the story is a bit cheesy, the truth is, like that little girl, we know Jesus is always with us, and we know and confess that God is good and merciful and loving and yet sometimes when the storms arise and our health fails us or we lose a loved one or another mass shooting has us afraid to lose the house and fear and anxiety begins to drag us down we need Jesus with skin on we need tangible help in remembering that God is with us and faithful. In today's gospel, after feeding thousands of people with five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus commands his disciples to cross the sea while he stays behind to dismiss the crowds and to pray. <clears throat> Much later that evening, in the darkest part of the night, the disciples are still heading where Jesus commanded them to go, and they're far from the land, battling the waves and the wind, when Jesus comes walking toward them. Unable to recognize Jesus, the terrified disciples think 
He's a ghost, and they cry out in fear. But Jesus assures them they need not be afraid, that they are not alone, that he is with them. The promise of Jesus' presence and a growing sense that, that what Jesus commands he accomplishes leads Peter to put his faith into action, saying, command me to come to you. Command me to do what you do. And it's only possible because it is you. At Jesus' command, Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking toward Jesus. At least until Peter notices the strong wind and becomes frightened. And then beginning to sink, cries out, Lord, save me, which Jesus grabs him and immediately does. Jesus' question about doubt reveals that the problem wasn't that Jesus commanded Peter to do something that was impossible because Peter was walking on the water. The issue was one of fear and faith. Peter didn't become frightened because he began to sink. Peter began to sink because he became frightened. And he became frightened because he took his eyes off of Jesus and focused on the storm. Elijah finds himself in that same situation in our first lesson. He has just witnessed and participated in a display of God's presence and power that clearly affirms that what God commands, God accomplishes. Defeating 450 prophets of Baal in a sacrificial grudge match in which God sent fire to consume not only Elijah's watered-down burnt offering, but the wood that he prepared, and the stones, and the dust, and the water in the trenches. When the people of Israel witnessed God's power, they fell on their knees and worshipped God, and then they took the false prophets of Baal, and they killed them. And then God, through Elijah, brought a rainstorm to end a three-year drought. Powerful. So why is Elijah now in a cave, feeling outnumbered and alone and vulnerable, and ready to give up his calling as God's prophet? Why? Well, when Queen Jezebel heard what Elijah had done to her prophets, she vowed to do the same to Elijah. And focused on the strong wind of Jezebel's wrath, Elijah forgot all about what had just happened. He forgot about God's presence and power and how God had been at work in him and through him and became frightened. And sinking into a sea of self-pity and despair, Elijah ran into the wilderness to hide and even asked God to take his life because he knew he was as good as dead. But an angel of the Lord provides food for Elijah and water. And strengthened by this meal, Elijah journeyed to Mount Oreb, the place where God first spoke to Moses and, and it entered into the covenant with Elijah's ancestors. And it's there in the midst of Elijah's fears that God's word comes to him, not with a spectacular display of power, but in a moment of silence that draws Elijah out of the cave where God commands Elijah to return to God's work, promising that he's not alone, that, that the God who protected him during the three-year drought and displayed his power and the destruction of the false prophets and ended the drought when Elijah prayed for rain and provided food and water in the wilderness and brought him here has not Abandon them. There are over 7,000 people in Israel who have not worshipped the false gods of Queen Jezebel. We focused on God's <coughs> presence and trusting in God's promise and God's faithfulness. Elijah will leave the mountain and do as God has commanded, anointing <coughs> Elisha as a prophet in his place. 
And the same will be true for Peter and the disciples. When, when Jesus and Peter get into the boat, the winds cease, the disciples worship Jesus and bear witness to him as the Son of God, and they continue to cross the sea. They continue to go where Jesus commands them to go and do what Jesus does. But this won't be the last time that the disciples are afraid. Jesus will soon tell them that as the Messiah, he must suffer and die and be raised and they want to follow him, it's going to cost them everything. Perhaps even their lives. The disciples, the community to whom Matthew writes, the church itself throughout the ages will find that following Jesus will often take them far from the shore. And they'll be battered by the wind and waves of rejection and persecution, even by their closest friends and family. And it will mean sometimes leaving the safety of the boat and doing what's only possible because Jesus commands it. And what Jesus commands, Jesus accomplishes. Their life in Jesus will be one of walking and sinking of worshiping and doubting, of faith and fear. And sometimes their, peer, their fear will paralyze them and prevent them from bearing witness to a truth that their fear causes them to forget. The truth that they are not alone, that Jesus is with them and is faithful and will save them. And the same is true today. We live in a broken world where the storms of life and the destructive power of the fear they bring are all around us and within us, and sometimes that fear can paralyze us and cause us to forget the truth that has drawn us here this morning, a truth more powerful than our fear, the truth that in Jesus, God's steadfast love and faithfulness and righteousness and peace took on skin and came among us. And in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, our cries of, Lord, save us, have already been answered. And of course, the truth that we are not alone, that, that in Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the word proclaimed, in water, and bread, and wine, and in his body, the church, God is present and continues to deliver us from the things that we fear, forgiving our sins, strengthening our faith, freeing us from our fear of survival, so we may go where Jesus commands and be about his work, extending his hand to those who are tossed about and tormented by the storms of life, collecting school supplies for neighborhood children, food for South Caldwell Christian Ministries and caring and praying for the homebound and the sick and the vulnerable, providing opportunities to grow in God's word through online Bible studies, sharing a fellowship luncheon, bearing witness with everything we have and all we are to a God whose love and grace and mercy are more powerful than our fear, more powerful and death, a God who is with us in the midst of the storm, a God in whom we have new life, abundant life, now. Sisters and, and brothers in Christ, that's the truth in which we live and place our hope and trust. It's, it's a trust we put skin on for the sake of the world. It's a truth for which we say, thanks be to God and not me. Please stand as you are able. Our hymn of the day is number 756, Eternal Father, Strong to
has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 105 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us now offer our prayers for a world in need. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending, and your righteousness becomes ours through Christ Jesus. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far, in church buildings and on street corners, in person and through digital means. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of sky and sea, the plants, animals, mountains, and plains proclaim your glory. Prosper the work of ecologists as they teach us new ways to care for the environment. Bring relief to areas recovering from natural disasters. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace and justice, you call us to live as your beloved community throughout the world. Instill in local, regional, national, and global politicians and civic leaders a desire to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we're afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick or in need of healing, especially Beverly and Glenn, Ruby and Cliff, Anne, Wayne, Ruth and Floyd, Judy and Bobby. Danny, Gail and Hoover, Jean and Jim, Patsy and William, Sammy, Stephen, Jim, Leonard, Hazel, Brenda, Tim, Austin, Sarah, Rachel, Tiffany, and those who we now name before you with our lips and in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrow. We pray for the children and teachers preparing for a new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you send people to renew both church and society. We give you thanks for their lives of faithful service as examples of following your call. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Awesome. Let us share that peace using American Sign Language or extending the hand of fellowship.
is for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid. strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in chains. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each month. Please stand as you are able. We continue with our operatory hymn, number 186. blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we've gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give you our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Please stand if you're able. And let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you've united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Closing him is number 785, When Peace Let Me.
sharing his love with all the people. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before you move, why don't we go ahead and have a blessing for the food so when it's ready, 